Hello and welcome to the Route 66 radio show interview special this week. Alan Nimmo, the lead singer and guitarist of the Scottish rock and blues band King King, on the show for an interview with me. We talked about loads of stuff, including their up and coming tours towards the end of the year with Thunder and Gun, uh, playing on stage with John Mayle recently as well, their UK tour, which they're currently uh, undergoing at the moment. In fact, I went to see them the other night at the Sale Waterside Art Centre in Greater Manchester. And uh, they were superb, really great show, and I filmed some of the show as well, which you'll see as part of this little video uh, here for you. So I got into this interview with Alan then by asking him, first of all, what we can expect to see on this current UK tour. We're doing a mixture across the board of all three albums. We're obviously trying to play most of the new material from the new album, reaching for the light album, which we've been really looking forward to playing. We've been holding off on playing those songs for a long time because when you record a new album, you, as a band, you're dying to play the new songs. But I think it's a little bit foolish, a bit hasty to throw them all in there right away and, and not play the, the songs that the fans are familiar with. So we had to lace them in a little bit along the way. But now we're in kind of full flow and we're doing pretty much most of that album along with uh, the other two albums as well. And of course, Reaching for the Light is another strong album from King King. How have you approached the writing and recording on this process? Have you done a lot of it yourself again? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I generally what I do is I write the, the main parts of the songs. I write the songs essentially. But now that we're settled in the unit and the band and everyone's sort of in place and, and I'm very happy with who everyone is and why everyone's there, I'm more than happy to take the songs into the studio and we do some pre-production rehearsals and, and arrangements and, and it's nice to get input from the guys as well concerning the songs because a fresh pair of ears can be vital, you know, from, from another, you know, looking at it from another perspective. So I get great input from everyone across in the band, so from, from bass, drums and keys. So that all makes for a better song in the end rather than, you know, trying to be so precious about it and hold on to, to everything and say, oh no, I want to do it all my way and, you know, you know I'm, I'm not that precious about it. I, I know that the guys are going to, are going to just, uh, just going to, you know, make it sound like it should sound. And uh, talking of making it sound like it should sound, you've sort of had a second bite of the cherry with the album Opener Hurricane. It's just been re-released, a radio remix. What's different about it and why have you made these changes? Well, that particular track was mastered by Bob Ludwig, the famous uh, mastering man. We felt like on the album it was a great album song, um, the way it was mixed, but I, I, we, you know, I had a chat with the lads and I thought, well, you know, we need to... I think it needs to, a different mix for radio. I think it needs to sound a little bit more, uh, a bit more contemporary rock and a little bit more exciting. So what we did was we went back into the studio and remixed and took out a load of microphones that were already in there uh, on the amps and things like that. I and mean, we just basically stripped it down pretty bare, actually. There's not much in terms of microphones that now, and it creates so much more space for the song, gave it a little bit of an oomph with um, um, some reverbs and things like that for the drums, and then we sent it over to Bob Ludwig for another bit of mastering uh, work, so and and the finished product that came back was really cool, I mean I really like it, I kind of wish we'd done that on the album <laughs> On Route 66, a radio show here based in Stockport, Greater Manchester, and we've got Alan Nimmo from King King on the line with us for a quick chat tonight. Uh, now, Alan, there's been a bit of discussion online and uh, amongst blues and rock fans as to whether or not King King have moved away from their blues roots and gone a bit rock and roll. I mean, you just mentioned uh, a certain lot of airplay on a national classic rock radio station. Are you bothered by this discussion, and where do you stand on it? Well, I mean, to be honest, I'm not too bothered about it. Um, my blues roots are intact, and they always will be. I'm, I'm steeped in blues. I've grown up being a lover of blues music, and no matter what I write and what we perform as King King, that essence of blues will always, as far as I'm concerned, be in amongst all those songs and, and everything that comes out, because that's what we grew up with, and all of us, in fact. You know, so all that, that blues influence is in there. And, and I think, um, you know, a lot of people maybe try and, sort of uh, talk about blues in, in terms of musical format, you know, and I often say, I say it on interviews, I say it on stage, 
that um, the blues doesn't need to necessarily be you know, in that 12 bar format that doesn't make it a blues song for me um, blues is something that for me that comes from inside, comes from the heart and soul and is just real and honest and I think if you can still maintain that no matter what you're doing then you've got some blues in there so if anyone wants to oppose that then that's absolutely <laughs> fine everyone's entitled to their opinion Well we're a blues and rock show so I've got no problem with the ACDC Thunder, White Snake and Thin Lizzy influences that uh, I've seen you've mentioned uh, in previous Fantastic. interviews <laughs> Now, this kind of leads us on nicely because I don't think you can really be accused of not being blues when you did that tour with John Mayle. How was that? It must have been amazing to play with him. Do you know what? It was such a fantastic honour to get asked to go on tour with John Mayle. And what an amazing experience it was as well. John Mayle is, a, is blues royalty as far as I'm concerned and, and another another great that, that I grew up listening to. I mean, I was introduced to John Mayle uh, and his music when I was very young. And um, obviously he provided a great platform for all my favourite guitar players, you know, Eric Clapton and Peter Green and guys like that. It was just so fantastic. But the one thing I will say about John Mayo is, is that he absolutely took us to school in terms of his energy. I mean, at the time when we were touring with him, he was 81. And, he, and the energy that he had and the, and the passion that he still has for music is just amazing. It's amazing to see someone who's recorded something like 60-odd albums over the years, over 50-odd years. I mean, I, I remember, I, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying so, but I remember there was one night we played, I think it was somewhere near Guildford, and he was chatting to me backstage and he said, oh, I always get, I'm, I'm a bit nervous tonight. Peter Green's in the audience. I always get really nervous when Pete's watching. You know, and I, I think that's just so refreshing and sweet, you know, to, to find someone like that who's his own legend, you know, and he still talks after all this time about being nervous because someone's watching him in the audience. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, the smile on your face on some of the fan shot YouTube footage is, uh, just kind of speaks <laughs> volumes as to how much fun you were having. Absolutely, it was just such a great time and so relaxed as well. Everyone, including John and his whole band, were all just uh, real cool guys and really welcomed us in. And it was fantastic, great time. We all were hanging out backstage, chatting, and it was just such a fantastic honour to be asked on stage. And not only once, but he actually got me up on stage several times during the tour, which was just outstanding for me. Indeed, which of course leaves us wondering, Alan, how are you going to follow that up? What's next for the band? Well, I mean, we've been honoured uh, with a nomination for the Classic Rock Roll of Honour as well, so that um, those results will be coming out pretty soon as well for uh, in the Best New Band category. And um, one of the greatest things for me to end this year, because it's been such a fantastic year for King King, at the end of this year, our, our final gig for 2015 will be at one of my favourite venues in the entire world and somewhere that I've always wanted to play as a kid. We're going to get to play at the Glasgow Barrowlands with a favourite band of mine since I was in high school called Gun. And uh, that's just going to be a, an amazing night. Um, I used to get my tickets for Gun and go and watch at the Barrowlands, jumping up and down in the crowd. Now I'm chatting to the guys on the phone and we're getting to play alongside them and, and play at the famous Barrowlands. I mean, that's just amazing. And then, you know, it doesn't stop there. After the new year, we're going to be uh, heading out on a, on a five-day um, arena tour with, with another of my all-time favourite bands, Thunder, which sees us finish the tour at Wembley Arena. I mean, you're talking about dreams coming true here. It's just fantastic. I don't know how to process it all, but just to try and enjoy it. Alan Nimmo, thanks very much indeed for being on Route 66. Thank you, Rory. Well done. Cheers.